and welcome to another amazing week of grade four social studies. Today, we will be jumping into our social studies materials for the week of June 1st. Can you believe it's June already? You're almost in fifth grade. This is crazy. My name is Mr. Crispins and I will be your teacher for the next few minutes. In preparation for our work today, please make sure you have accessed your social studies material for the week of June 1st. Or if you don't have access to your device right now, just grab a sheet of paper and follow along. Let's get started. We have been learning a lot about colonial times in class, and today we're going to check out colonialism from the perspective of children. Before we jump into our lesson, let's take a quick look at our lesson objective. Today, we are gonna be exploring colonial chores and games in order to describe how children spent their time during the time of colonialism. So let's break this down a bit. We're going to explore colonial chores and games. That means we're gonna take a look at the activities kids had to do during this time period. And then we're also going to describe how children spent their time during this time period in history or during the time of colonialism. This is going to be fun, but I bet you're already thinking, I bet it was boring because there were no video games. No way, Jose. Children played incredibly important roles during colonial times. Let's see what they got to do. If you're following along with me on your device, the next thing we will do is to think about it or the discussion. If you're using a sheet of paper, you'll just need to write down a few things as we go along. Let's start with this one. How do you spend your time? Like right now, do you help your family by having house chores? Or do you have free time to do whatever you want? Jot down a few things you do during your free time, along with any chores you may have. Now I can't ask you to share, but maybe you had a few of these things like this. Do you play video games, ride your bike, or read a book? Those are all great things to do. And I remember when I was in fourth grade, I fell in love with fishing and went all of the time. What chores do you have? Maybe you wrote down things like taking care of the dog or cleaning your room or taking out the trash. I remember my mom and dad always kept giving me chores to do. And I can also remember my mom telling me all the time, are you bored? Then get a broom and sweep the floor. I'll never forget her saying that to me. I always had something to do for, for mom and dad. I wonder what types of chores kids had during colonial times. I wonder what they did with their free time. Let's check it out. Life in colonial times could be harsh and challenging for children, but there was still fun. During the time of colonialism, chil children played important roles for their families. And when children were not completing chores or housework, many children, or at least most of them, still had a little bit of free time. But what chores did they have? Most children during colonial times lived on farms with their family or in fairly rural areas. These were areas that were pretty spread out. And since there weren't cars or grocery stores back then, it was really important to take care of the family animals, uh, the cows, the chickens, the goats. And this was the children's job. They had to get watered and feed the animals. They would milk the cows, collect eggs from the chicken, or get milk from the goat to make cheese. They would also need to pick fruit and vegetables, fetch water from a well or a stream, and find firewood for the family. There was no heaters back then. You couldn't flip a switch and turn on the heater. So the fireplace and firewood was essential for families. These weren't easy tasks since you weren't always right near a well or a stream. Think about how much water it takes to wash your hands in the sink. I bet you wouldn't waste that much water if you had to go get more when you ran out. Next, we're gonna watch a short video about children during colonial times. This video comes from Colonial Williamsburg and is led by children who are actors. This is a volunteer job where kids get to be actors in a colonial town, and it's a pretty cool gig. While you watch the video, think about what life was like for children. Jot down a few notes on that sheet of paper we pulled out earlier about the things you see and notice during the time period.
Colonial Williamsburg's junior interpreters know all about growing up in the past. After completing their training, these special volunteers between the ages of 10 and 18 work in costume at sites throughout the historic area, teaching young visitors what it's like to be a kid in the 18th century. Well, they were all homeschooled because they didn't have public schools for children um, from little to what would now be 12th grade. So if your parents were uneducated, you were likely to become un uneducated too. Some chores were similar to ones that kids do today, uh, like they would make their beds and uh, some would scrub the floor and help with food and stuff, but some were very different, like getting water from the well and you know, now we just turn on a faucet and we get water, but they would have to open up the well and pull the water and transfer it to other buckets and there's a lot more work. So at the James Getty house, he was a silversmith, so his sons and daughters would probably be polishing silver, sweeping, keeping the shop tidy. Well, if they were lucky, they'd be doing sewing. If they weren't, they'd be out in the fields. They might also be helping with their mother in the kitchen, or the slave that they had in the kitchen. And helping their mother and cooking, if they were a woman, and helping their father and learning an apprenticeship if they were a male. Now, outside of the primary responsibilities in the house, boys and girls had different jobs during colonial times. Boys would often spend their times with their fathers to learn a trade or a skill, while girls helped in the home with their mom. Both played key roles in the family. Boys would go hunting and fishing to make sure that his family had food to eat at home. And imagine if you were the one responsible for your family eating at night, Think about how stressful that would be for such a young person. Boys would also have to learn how to make furniture or sell things in the market for their families. They might also be responsible for making household repairs when their fathers were away. But girls played really important jobs too. Maybe even the most important role. Girls would sweep at the home and tend to animals, but they were responsible for making thread which would ultimately turn into blankets, clothes, and bed linens. This job kept the family warm in the winter and cool in the summer. It was also very time consuming. Think of how often we tear our clothing or grow out of it. Without this job, you wouldn't have a blanket to sleep with at night and you'd have to depend on the fire just to keep warm. They're also, they also made candles and soap for their family to use. And without electricity, candles were the sole provider of light during nighttime. Young women who were teenagers would often have to look after their younger siblings, kind of like babysitters, as their parents worked more time in the fields or contributed in other ways. These were some serious responsibilities, but what did they do for fun? Did they just sleep all day after all of that exhausting work? Or what did they do when they couldn't work? Maybe the weather was really bad as snow or ice or, or heavy rains. The next video you watch are going to be about kids in their free time. It's going to come from those same kids in Williamsburg. Check out the games they played along with the child, what the child actors think about life back then as it compares to today. When their chores were done, they had tons of fun, like coop and stick. They played with me with homemade things. I uh, still they played trap ball. They just played like jacks and they drew on plates and they danced. Dancing was a lot of fun for all ages. Um, probably today. I like the things we have now, AC, running water. <laughs> I'd be a kid today, probably, 
because that way I could get a proper education. Um, I'd probably be a kid today because, again, you get the proper education. Um, you get running water, good food, um, a shelter to live on, a shelter to have. Um, Air conditioning, air conditioning. <laughs> yeah, that is one of the main things. Yeah, I mean, I think it would be nice to be sort of both, which is why I like the job. I mean, there are a lot of cool things that they would do back then that we don't really think about today. But, um, I mean, it's a lot easier today, a lot of things. That would probably be a hard decision, though, because all the things they did, it, the costumes are fun. And all the games are very educational, which is a good thing. But then I'd probably miss modern conveniences that we have today. But everything here is fun. Wow, life back then was sure different. If we want a toy today, we would usually just go to a store and buy something. We might even ask our parents or family members to get it for us for our birthday or for some other special holiday. During colonial times, parents usually made their toys uh, out of wood scraps and things that were not needed around the house. Little girls in colonial times would make dolls out of corn husks, rags, and scraps, and sometimes even carved dried apples as the head. Here's a picture over here of a little girl baby doll made out of a corn husk. It sure looks different than the uh, dolls children play with today. Families in colonial times were often large. Most families had four to five or even six children. They would play with each other and children would also have a lot of imaginary play like kids today. They would play with their neighbors, go down, they didn't have like streets like we have today, but um, they would go down there to their closer na closest neighbor and play. They'd go sledding in the winter and swimming in the summer. They played this game called Scotch Hopper, which was really similar to Hopscotch like we have uh, and we play today. But since there weren't as many roads as there are today, children had to build the game out of sticks. There wasn't like chalk that they could write down on the street. So they had to build that game out of sticks. Parents might make seesaws or swings out of scraps from their home. Children might also play games like ball in a cup, which is this game uh, right here, where the ball is attached to a little wooden cup. And you've probably seen them before, um, but that was a pretty popular game. Or they would play the game jacks, which is using little metal jacks and a little rubber rubber ball. Um, sometimes they would use wood balls and they would bounce it and try to capture the jacks. Each game would take children's attention for hours, but there wasn't as many distractions as there are today. No TV, no video games, no computers, no phones, no internets. It was pretty different. Children played other games too. There are written accounts of children playing football and the aim of football back then was to kick rather than to throw a leather ball into a goal. Now, I, I think you're probably thinking, oh yeah, football like the Baltimore Ravens. That's not the case. This would resemble more like American soccer today. But two games that you might've seen back then that were pretty popular were games called nine pins and a game called rolling the hoop. Nine pins was like lawn bowling or bowling on a table. Parents would make nine pins out of wood scraps and make a small wooden ball. Children would then essentially go bowling. So if you take a look at this image down here, that's what these two, uh, two people were doing. They were playing some form of nine pin. So it's, like I said, it's similar to bowling uh, and it just wasn't very sophisticated. Uh, they would go outside and play it on the lawn, maybe you played it on the floor or even the dining room table. Rolling the hoop was a game where you had a hoop and imagine like a really big hula hoop or just a, a big hula hoop. And the hoop would be rolled on the ground and children would have to keep it going by hitting the top with sticks. And you see this picture right here of kids playing rolling the hoop because this game was still popular. This picture was taken in 1922. And this picture uh, just shows that kids were playing with it even up until uh, this most recent century. Um, but the hoop would have to go a certain distance. So you would have to hit it on the top to see how far it could go. Or maybe if you were playing with uh, another person, you would each take turns hitting it back and forth to try to get it to a certain area. 
And then once it got to that certain area, when the hoop fell, you would try to jump in the hoop to see who could win. There are lots of different ways you could play that game. But who would have thought that a hoop and a stick would be so much fun? I, I know, I know what you're thinking. This doesn't sound like a lot of fun to us today, but remember, kids back then had a very different life and they didn't have a lot of the things that we also have today, like I talked about before, like TV or the internet or phones. And these were really important games that took their minds away and let kids be kids. Now let's collect our thoughts about what we learned today. On your sheet of paper or on the digital assignment, let's think and respond to each of these three questions. Number one, why were children such essential members of families during colonial times? What made children so important to their family? Question two, in your opinion, which colonial chore would have been the most challenging for you? Why, why, why would you think that? And lastly, Compare the life of children in colonial times to that of today. There are some similarities, so what is similar? But obviously there's some differences too, so what is also different? Take a few minutes on your paper to respond to these three questions. If you're working on the digital assignment, this next piece is included as the show what you know assignment. If you're working on a paper version, you would want to respond to this question and then share your work with your teacher in a way that best fits for you. So on either a separate sheet of paper, I think you could probably just give yourself a little bit of space and on the paper that you've been working with, uh, describe life as a, ch a colonial child. Identify some of the responsibilities children had during this time period and the different activities they did for fun. Try to give examples to support your answer. Take just a few minutes to respond. So before we finish today, let's just go back to our objective to just make sure we did what we said we were gonna do. So today we set forth to explore colonial chores and the games that children played in order to describe how children spent their time during the time of colonialism. We learned about all the different colonial chores like uh, milking the cows and getting uh, firewood and getting water for their family. And we also learned about all the different types of games like scotch hopper or nine pins or even rolling the hoop. So we definitely could answer this question about how children spent their time during the time of colonialism uh, by going back to all the things we learned today. I'd say we had a job well done. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. Take care, bye-bye.